Welcome back. This is the second part of this video series. If you haven't seen the first part, then I suggest you probably want to watch that first. I'll put a link for that down below in the description. But in this second part, is it's a series where I'm testing a free strategy to trade Forex off the four hour chart. And I'm going to show you how I code it, how to backtest it properly, and then hopefully we're going to make some improvements and get something that's quite usable at the end of it and you will have all the, the inputs and parameters so you can take it away and use it yourself if it's uh, if I'm happy with it or if you're happy with it. So first of all what I want to do is going to go over to my computer screen where I've coded the strategy and look at how and when the trades occur and then I want to go into my first development and start improving and optimizing things. So let's go over to the screen now and I'll show you what I'm doing. This first chart I want you to look at is something I've just put up literally for demonstration purposes, just to show you what uh, an entry signal looks like on the chart. If you haven't seen the full criteria, look at the previous video, I'll go over it and show you again on there. But quickly here, looking at the four hour chart, um, this happens to be pound, dollar, and what we're looking for is an outside bar, so a bar that's got a range that's greater than the bar previous to it. If you look by my cursor just here, you see our buy signal. This bar previous, this, this big bar here, I'll take the cursor back off it so you can see it properly, that's the outside bar because the range of it was greater than that previous bar. For a buy signal, we want to see the outside bar above the 30 period exponential moving average, which is this, this cyan line here. And we also need to see the close of that bar is greater than the open of that bar. So all those conditions are met, then we buy immediately at the open of the next bar, or at the close of that bar, being 4x, they tend to be identical anyway. Maybe occasion gap over the weekend if it happens to be the last bar on a, on a Friday evening. And exactly the opposite is for short trades. So still an outside bar, but below the 30 period exponential moving average, and the close has got to be smaller or less out below the, the open, and then we enter. So the first development we're going to look at is. Uh, it's I mentioned it's pound dollar. I'm testing over a period of the start of 2008 through to the end of uh, December 2016. So quite a wide period, quite a wide amount of years. That's what I normally do. And the first thing we're going to look at is if there's a good time of day to take the trades, or so a time of like a time window during the day, so maybe between midday and 4 p.m. Only take the trades if the signal occurs uh, during that time. It's quite an effective way to optimize the strategy. Um, so, first of all, what I get you to look at is without any optimizing or anything like that, just looking at taking the trades as they come. Now, it's worth mentioning that. Where I got this strategy from, the person who gave the rules out, they were a little bit vague on the exits. They talked about Fibonacci levels, that sort of thing. I tend not to use them in my strategies. So I'm actually going to test a variation of stop losses, take profits, time exits within this video series on this strategy. But for now, the, all we got is the entry signals. So we've got no stop loss and no exit signals. The only exit will be is, so if we go long, the only time we'll come out of that trade is to go short in the opposite direction when a short signal occurs. So we can have a look at the strategy performance report. The equity curve is probably the only thing we need to look at at the moment. Very easy in multi charts. So that's the equity curve. So starting capital of 100,000 and it ends pretty miserably over that year's worth of of testing. So straight away we can see that's mm, 
not too inspiring, is it? So what I'm going to do now is check to see uh, if there's a time of the day where we should start trading. At the moment, we're starting at midnight and it's running all the way through for 24 hours and ending uh, 24 hours later. So I'm going to check to see if there's a, a start time that might be somewhat better. So we can do that um, by running optimization. I've already done that just to speed things up and show you the results of the optimization. And I've optimized hour by hour, starting from midnight. And here's the optimization report. This is where we start the trade. So starting at 0, 100 hours, 100 hours, 1 o'clock in the morning, all the way through to uh, midnight the next evening. And you'll notice that here's the results of net profit. And we can see straight away that either probably 6 o'clock or 10 o'clock in the morning is going to be the best place to start. You'll notice that these results come in clumps of identical four. And that's because that's a four-hour period. And we're only getting signals once every four hours because we're using a four-hour bar. So let's try starting at 600 and starting at 10 in the morning, uh, see what the results look like. And this is the equity curve using a start time of 6 o'clock in the morning rather than 0, 100 hours. And immediately we can see it, it looks better, doesn't it? It's not great, but it's certainly uptrending and moving in the right direction. Uh, if we look at the trade analysis, that will give us an idea of how many trades were taken, 96 trades, with an average trade of quite a big $430. But like I say, that's going to reduce because we're staying in trades quite a long time at the moment because there's no quick exit like we probably will end up with. So the next thing, let's test the, see what happens when we start trading at 10 o'clock in the morning. Hopefully this be the performance report starting trading at 10 o'clock in the morning. Obviously, we've got less trades, we've got 69 trades now rather than 96 because we're starting later and we've got a even larger $1,250 trade. Now, it's worth mentioning that I always test with Forex, uh, I test one full lot, it's a, it's a fixed one full lot or 100,000 units. So each, uh, each pip with pound dollar is worth uh, $10. So just, just to give you an idea. So with an average trade of uh, $1,250, that's an average trade of 125 pips profit. Let's have a quick look at the equity curve. And that actually looks a nicer equity curve to me. It looks smoother, doesn't it? Although one thing to notice is it made a lot of money very early on, these very early years, probably through 2008 for some reason, it made a lot of money. The rest of it was much smoother uh, during the later years. So already this strategy has turned from something that looked pretty horrible in the beginning to the beginning or the very beginning of what looks a much better equity curve straight away. Next, what I want to look at is to see if there's a time where we should end the trade. So, for example, this one started at 10 o'clock in the morning. We might say, actually, we, we, don't, we only want to trade between 10 o'clock and 1400 hours in the afternoon. That gives us a very narrow window to trade during the day, but you never know. Those best trades may come along during that narrow window. So the next thing I want to do is, rather than stop trading midnight the next day, I'm going to test to see if there's a, um, a better result from stopping the trading earlier. That's going to be in our next optimization.